Have you ever thought about taking out a loan and not having to repay it? Well, in most cases, that'll end up forcing the lender to raise the interest so you owe even more on that loan. Or, if you take the loan from a more nefarious-looking individual, then you might have to pay it back with a body part or two. Well, don't worry. Today we're going to be looking at a crypto platform that allows you to take out a loan and have it repay itself over time. So, you never really have to pay it back. How you ask? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about today. What Alchemix Finance is, how to actually use it, as well as what they have planned for in the future. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as I mentioned, Alchemix Finance allows you to take out loans that repay themselves over time. This is because of their main products, vaults. Vaults are the meat and potatoes of Alchemix Finance. These are essentially what allow you to provide collateral in the form of DAI or ETH, borrow against that collateral, all the while having your debt paid off by the yield generated from the collateral you deposited. Or put simply, you deposit DAI, which is a stable coin uh, pegged to the US dollar. That DAI is sent to the DAI vault on Yearn.Finance, where it generates yield. That yield is then used to repay any debt within Alchemix Finance, including yours. So the main takeaway here is that you can't get liquidated for borrowing against your collateral, whereas most DeFi platforms that allow you to lend and borrow, some similar to, for example, Aave, uh, there you can get liquidated if you don't manage your position correctly. On Alchemex, they essentially pay off your position for you. And now that we know on a very basic high level how Alchemex Finance works, let's go ahead and take a look at the two pools that they currently offer, starting with DAI. So within the DAI pool, as I mentioned, you can go ahead and deposit DAI, and in return, you can actually go ahead and borrow against it. Now, the main thing here uh, in terms of the actual pools that they have is that there's something called collateralization ratio. And this is pretty much the ratio of how much uh, money you can go ahead and deposit versus how much you can borrow against it. So in this case, DAI has a 200% collateralization ratio, meaning if you deposit $100, you are only allowed to take up to 50% of your deposit. So in this case, if you deposit 100 bucks, you can go ahead and borrow $50. And two numbers you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when you wanna go ahead and borrow off the collateral you just deposited is number one, the amount you're available to borrow. Again, that's just gonna depend on what the collateralization ratio is. In this case for DAI, it's 200%. And the other is going to be global mintable ALUSD or all USD. This is essentially Alchemex Finance's uh, USD token, pretty much their token pegged to the dollar. And this is gonna be what you're borrowing. You're not borrowing DAI because you've already deposited that. You're borrowing their version of their dollar, essentially. Uh, and again, this is actually going to go ahead and update automatically. But this is very important because if it says zero, then that means you can't borrow anything, most likely because uh, the debt ceiling has already been hit. And we'll get into what a debt ceiling is uh, as we go into the next pool, which is ETH pool. Now, the ETH pool was actually just released, and the collateralization ratio for this is a lot higher just because uh, they wanted to go ahead and ensure that everything pretty much went up to standard as what they would hope. Uh, essentially, the collateralization ratio for ETH is about 400%. If you deposit $100 of Ether in this case, you're only allowed to take up to 25% of your deposit. So in this case, if you deposit $100, you'll go ahead and be able to take out about $25. And all the debt ceiling is, is essentially how much of that certain asset can be borrowed. In this case, only 2,000 AL ETH can be borrowed uh, globally. When I went ahead and actually provided collateral on ETH and tried to withdraw some AL ETH, uh, I wasn't actually even able to do it because there wasn't any more left. It looked like everyone had already gotten to it before me, so I was kind of out of luck there. Uh, and the reason why this is, is because, and I quote, uh, the ALCX dev team and community chose to be conservative with our launch to ensure all systems are functioning properly. Post-launch, we will reassess the collateralization ratio and debt ceiling together with our amazing community. Uh, so pretty much you can't even borrow any AL ETH currently as of the making of this video. Uh, so yeah, kind of sucks. But with good reason. Again, this is kind of them taking accountability in the sense that, you know, they want this awesome product to be used by, you know, a certain amount of people and more or less not have it be tested because they've already been audited and we'll get into that soon but make sure that everything is functioning properly in the open environment on Ethereum, right? We don't want anyone testing in prod as we've seen before. But let's go into some of the risks uh, now involved with Alchemex. To mitigate some of the risks that I'm about to mention, uh, Alchemex has actually already been audited by Surtech, which is a pretty uh, reputable, uh, you know, I guess you could say uh, auditing company within the crypto space, as well as Runtime. Uh, they've actually just partnered with them 
and they're essentially working hand in hand with Alchemex uh, to make sure that their code is up to speed, that there's no bugs within them actually developing the protocol itself, uh, and while they're continuously expanding Alchemex and updating their code. Uh, I think that's amazing and something that I think most DeFi related projects should have because of how important uh, it is to make sure that, especially vaults, because they have the most risk, uh, you know, are being con continuously audited. Now, onto the actual risks. Number one, the most obvious is going to be smart contract risk. This comes with any type of smart contract on Ethereum, any type of DeFi platform on Ethereum, they all use smart contracts. And this essentially just means if there are any bugs within the smart contract, that's obviously going to be one of the biggest risks that can happen. That's why they're audited. But even with audits, it doesn't mean a bug is always 100% clean. There is always some sort of attack vector that could be had that maybe people just don't know about, you know? So smart contract risk is always going to, going to be there, especially with vaults because of how intricate vaults can be. And this is going to be actually where we start listing off some of what could happen that could end up messing with Alchemex. Uh, number one would be, and this, by the way, this is from a uh, Medium article written by BombX, it looks like. Shouts out to you, my brother. Uh, I'll leave the link down below. But essentially, uh, if MakerDAO, if that protocol fails, which is very highly unlikely, as they mentioned over here, um, if the die goes off peg, which I don't think the die has gone off peg too often, but I have seen, uh, obviously, other stable coins, and I'm sure you guys have as well, uh, kind of fluctuate quite a bit between the dollar range. Uh, the Alchemex protocol failure, again, which is just going to be smart contract risk. Uh, if, all, if the ALUSD goes off peg, which is, I guess you could say, I mean, it's also smart contract risk, but there's some, something more specific. Uh, curve protocol failure, since they are also working with Curve on making sure that that uh, ALUSD stays pegged to the dollar. And of course, lowering of yield rates on Curve would equal to prolonged rated of loan payment, or pretty much uh, if Curve yield gets cut in half during a bear market, then borrows of all ALUSD must wait twice the amount of time for repayment. I do want to point out that I think that last point is probably the most likely to happen. I don't think the first, second, or maybe even the, uh, I think it was the fourth or the fifth. Uh, I don't think the first, second, or fifth uh, will most likely happen. I mean, these are pretty, pretty well-known protocols that already exist. Not to say that it won't happen, but there is a pretty small chance compared to the last one, which I definitely could see. Essentially, the last one is saying that if the yield on curve goes lower over time, then the actual time of your loan being repaid will also increase because there's less yield coming in and repaying the loans. Uh, this is something that could potentially happen. Um, I, I would say this is definitely a lot more likely than anything else um, because I, I feel like yield rates do tend to fluctuate quite a bit as people get in them, as people get, get out of them, um, specifically the pools. However, to add on to it, I don't think this is a deal breaker by any means. Um, you know, I do think the lowering of yield rates will most likely happen as more people get into contracts and especially more notable ones like Curve. But I don't think that it's something that'd be like, oh my God, Alchemix is useless now. Not at all. Not at all by any means. Um, this is just something that could happen and something that you should know about if you do plan on getting involved with Alchemex, that any, any of these things could essentially happen, uh, much like with any other smart contract. So keep those risks in mind, please. Next, let's go ahead and take a look at the transmuter. Uh, I know this sounds like a really weird word, something that you'd probably find in like Halo 3 or something, but <laughs> the transmuter pretty much takes any ALUSD that you have and gradually converts it into DAI to ensure that all ALUSD stays truly pegged to the dollar. This is pretty much looks like it's another way for them to make sure that the ALUSD stays within that dollar range. They have a lot of different ways you'll find that um, incentivizes people to keep that ALUSD value at $1. Um, and that's kind of how a lot of crypto works. And the point why I really like it a lot is that a lot of these projects tend to use uh, incentives to keep things at order, to keep the status quo or equilibrium, I guess you could say. Uh, incentives are pretty important within crypto. And as you can see, uh, the yield on this is pretty, pretty insane. Again, this is me just making this video. Uh, you can see that the total deposited ALUSD currently is about 250 bucks. And I think that's... Is that just how much they put in? Oh my lord. Um, <laughs> and you can see the estimated die daily yield is about 111529 Um, I haven't gotten involved in it only because, as you can see, I have a very small amount of die borrowed. I only I only actually borrowed a, I only actually deposited $123. Got $61 uh pretty much in return. And the gas fee to actually do this would be way too expensive, I think, uh, to actually, you know, make it worth it. But nonetheless, uh, that's kind of what the transmuter is. It's the whole point of it is to make sure that there's more incentive to keep that ALUSD pegged to the dollar, while at the same time providing people incentives to do so. We also have farms on Alchemex. Uh, pretty much, this consists of uh, liquidity pools you can join 
to earn some Alchemex, uh, obviously, and its pair as yield. And I wouldn't be surprised if they have some liquidity mining program going on for that now as well. You could also just stake your uh, Alchemex tokens or your ALUSD, uh, you know, if you don't want to deal with any impermanent loss uh, and just, you know, get returns on that, uh, you know, instead of providing liquidity, as I mentioned. And now let's get on to the Alchemex token. Obviously, we love to talk about the tokens. Uh, there was actually a pre-mine of Alchemex tokens, uh, about 478,612 tokens uh, were pre-mined, and they expect to have over 2.39 million ALCX tokens uh, within circulation about in about three years from now. Uh, keep in mind, there is no hard cap on the supply. So after three years, there will be a steady inflation rate of 4.5% yearly. They mentioned in their uh, documentation, I think it was, that the main goal of the Alchemex token isn't to provide it as like an investment tool, which I think most projects will tell you anyways, uh, but more of like a governance token, which is going to be what the point of the Alchemex token is to keep in charge of the DAO, the, De the Decentralized Autonomous Organization that they want to build around Alchemex. Uh, pretty much like most other protocols, they're looking to become a lot more decentralized. So instead of the team making decisions, they want the community to make decisions with those tokens. Uh, they are definitely a fan of letting people decide what should happen with Alchemex, obviously, uh, what should be added and what should be changed, etc. I'll go ahead and leave the uh, actually link for the DAO and the governance and all that stuff uh, down below in the description. If you do want to take a look at what they're planning on adding next, um, in this case they, it's just the community. And in terms of recent news and any future stuff, uh, they don't really have any hard dates on releases. Again, because they have the DAO going on, I guess they can't really have that since it's all user-driven. Uh, but some of the stuff that they're looking to do is essentially, number one, ensuring the security of the protocol and future add-ons, which means more audits. Number two, addition of currencies like ETH, which they've already added, as well as wrapped Bitcoin uh, to be used within Alchemex, which I think is a great idea, um, as well as I hope they add like, you know, like a whole bunch of different cryptocurrencies that people like, much like Aave already does. Uh, number three, they're going to be adding more collateral types, so a wider, a wider choice of uh, stablecoin collateral types for all USD. Most likely will include Tether. Um, what are some other stablecoins that exist out there? Uh, maybe the UST, which is uh, the Terra version of a stablecoin, as well as additional dApps to expand the uh, Alchemex ecosystem, such as Alchemex-based credit lines and more. That is pretty big. <laughs> I'm actually really excited to see something like that, uh, Alchemex credit line. But all this essentially is going to build towards what they're calling Alchemex V2. And apparently the biggest change, according to a user I was just speaking with on Reddit, V1 completely prevents smart contract interactions within the vault and was done largely as a safety measure against flash loan attacks. V2 is going to open this up a little, but there are still going to be restrictions. But this should really greatly improve the utility of the product, and that's what he was referring to when he was talking about uh, V2 having more integrations. So essentially, V2 will pretty much usher the beginning of smart contract integrations within uh, the actual vaults that Alchemix has. So to give you guys my final thoughts, I want to touch on a couple things. Number one, I think this idea is fucking genius. <laughs> I mean, I, who, who would have thought that, who would have thought of creating the ability to have people take out loans and having the loans repay themselves so the users who've already borrowed that money is essentially theirs. Uh, it's really, really interesting, I think, the, the idea behind this. Uh, not to mention the fact that they could add more vaults in the future, I think is really dope. Uh, not just ETH, not just, uh, you know, all USD or DAI, I guess, in this case, uh, but adding more assets that people want to hold indefinitely. Like, for example, if that debt ceiling on Ethereum was higher, I would love to go ahead and let's say, you know, if I had it, like lend 50 ETH, for example, borrow 25 ETH. And essentially, effectively, I have 75 ETH just chilling now. I just have to wait for that loan to repay itself to actually use it, right? Uh, so I think that's just like, it's almost like a, uh, that's so weird. It's like getting yield in the future. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I do want to be clear though. Uh, you should do more of your own research if you do plan on actually uh, working with Alchemex in terms of providing your liquidity, providing collateral and all that stuff. Uh, this was a very high level overview. And, you know, I do like to talk about these things because I think that they're very important for the, uh, acceleration of the crypto space, as well as the adoption of it. I think this stuff is really interesting. I, I would have never expected something like this to come about. Um, I'm already involved in Alchemix, as you guys know a little bit, uh, in terms of like actually like lending stuff. Um, I haven't really borrowed much. I've only been able to borrow that little bit of die because, you know, there are no, uh, there is no more uh, ETH or all ETH left to be, you know, I guess withdrawn. And lastly, I would love to see Alchemix, you know, put their contracts onto Polygon, Arbitrum when it comes out, and any layer two. Right now, it costs a lot of money to 
uh, actually use any type of smart contract on Ethereum since the price is going back up again. Uh, so it's good and it's good and it's bad, I guess. It's such a such a weird such a weird space to be in when you're kind of salty the price is going up because you can't interact with things. <laughs> but nonetheless, what do you guys think? Do you think Alchemex is changing DeFi uh, and borrowing lending as we know it? Let me know down below. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.